Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Nicholas McKay, a first year graduate student of Technical University Munich's program of responsibility in science, technology and society. This is our seventh episode of STS Shorts, a new video series from Eclectic Spacewalk, in which we dialogue with a researcher, lecturer, writer, and or eclectic human in the science, technology, and society discipline or related fields. These shorts will only be around 30 minutes in length, and the goal is to highlight and hopefully introduce a new audience to our guests' research and work. Please grab a coffee, drink, and open your curious mind as we dive right in. So today we are pleased to be joined by Stefan Aikut. Stefan is the director of the Center for Sustainable Society Research, an interdisciplinary research center of the Faculty of Business, Economics, and Social Sciences at Universitat Hamburg. The center is, quote, understanding institutions and processes of modern societies with respect to sustainability. He is also an assistant professor of sociology. Welcome to STS Shorts, Stefan. Um, hello, and thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure. Um, so first question, uh, just as we start, we'll probably go broad and then uh, kind of get in uh, deeply. But uh, can you give us a little bit of a brief overview of your time before you did your PhD, some undergraduate, you know, some some uh, filler of, of what you were doing up until you got into kind of the STS related fields? And we'll get into that more. Yeah, I, I started um, my studies in Berlin um, and actually not in STS, but in political science. So that was my first um, field and um, in an institute that's called the Otto Zoo Institute, which is um, very one of the biggest um, political science institutes in Germany, actually, and um, where which has the advantage or had the advantage at that time to um, have a very broad curriculum and uh, where you could um, find your specialization or your interests. Um, so I studied, uh, did my undergraduates there um, and um, did also some time then in Istanbul at Sabancı Üniversitesi. Um, and uh, then later at ÖSS in Paris, where I did um, kind of a second Erasmus um, uh, uh, fellowship. And um, over these different states, I got more and more interested in questions of history of science, epistemology, and questions of how actually we get to know something and what the methods of scientific discovery are, how they change, etc. So it began with an, with an interest in epistemology and philosophy of science, and it moved more and more, especially in Paris then, um, to an interest in the historical and sociological aspects of um, uh, science in society and um, uh, notably also um, questions of expertise. So how do experts shape political processes? Because of course I was still um, interested in politics, but then also what do we know actually about the nature of scientific practice of the way that science is um, uh, practice evolve and produces knowledge, etc. So I got from one thing to the other and I had this great chance actually to have this freedom of um, of being able to to um, to specialize as I felt um, uh, where my interest went. And this was especially true then in Paris where um, I did uh, one year of Erasmus first and um, where at the end of this I did um, uh, a study on the history of mathematics, which was not at all um, connected to uh, my field of study, but, but which somehow uh, worked out um, fine. And um, just perhaps something also on um, on my background, um, before studying um, political science, I was very much interested in the sciences and natural sciences and so physics and, and mathematics, etc. But I chose the social sciences. And so somehow this was also a way, uh, I guess, for me to combine interests um, on um, two types of interests that I had uh, on politics, social sciences, but also on uh, the natural sciences and the way um, that uh, scientific um, communities work. And so this led me then to um, uh, finally to my doctoral thesis, which I did in um, in Paris after doing in the Institute where I did my Erasmus also a master's degree, mm -hmm. um, which was already then um, in uh, science, technology and society as a degree. And uh, so the, um, the doctoral thesis that um, 
try to combine or combine these two interests in doing a, a historic study on the way that climate change was constructed between public discourse and scientific discourse. Right. And then so do you, before we just get into your PhD thesis, because I think it's super interesting, can you kind of touch a little bit more on maybe some of the cultural or sociopolitical or things that were different in each of the countries? Because, I mean, you, you mentioned Germany, you mentioned France, and you mentioned Turkey. So I bet that was interesting, you know, to see those differences, but then also not just with knowledge creation, but then you just mentioned too that of being very interested in the natural sciences and then now kind of being in social science. So can you talk us through some of those tensions of not just the fields in general, but then also the countries that kind of you've done research in as well? Yeah, I mean, somehow um, the differences between countries, you touch different types of um, differences, if I, uh, if I can say so. So differences between um, uh, national cultures um, and the way that perhaps um, things are or um, education is mm -hmm. organized, etc. But also differences um, uh, um, between disciplines and of course um, one of the um, traditions that STS research that I came across uh, later um, uh, from Karen Knossetina and others um, tries to make exactly that point to say that disciplines are organized also in a cultural way so they have cultural codes different ways of doing things etc and so um, to come back to my um, to my studies and to uh, to the different countries, I think the the difference between countries was as strong or as structuring for uh, my studies than was uh, the difference between um, academic cultures, mm -hmm. uh, really. So uh, I studied in um, political science, which has a very, um, let's say, strong um, uh, professional identity. Mm -hmm. way of doing things etc then i did um social sciences and my phd is formally um in uh in history um but history with a strong sociological um background so somehow i navigated these different um, academic worlds as i navigated um the different uh countries where i was and also to my background um i am multicultural um <laughs> by uh, by education, because I'm um, I'm a German and Turkish. Uh, my father um, came from Turkey to study in Germany, and so somehow I think I always also felt comfortable in navigating these different um, uh, types of cultures and of appropriating the codes of the different disciplines, but also the different countries. Um, perhaps one thing that was similar, though, um, is that in all three countries, I was in institutions that. Um, that left a lot of liberty in the way of conducting studies. So that's what mm. I said before, but which is not at all obvious um, when you study in Turkey and in France, especially because um, generally you have um, educational systems that are very much organized um, according to very strict curricula, a little bit like, a, like in school. Um, but Sabancı University, when I came there, had a social science um, uh, department that actually didn't differentiate between uh, the different social science disciplines. So that was a um, uh, first discovery for me. And Russia SS um, was an amazing place at that time in, in where I was in Paris, um, because uh, it brought together um, researchers that did their teachings on the basis of their research, much more than on the basis of predefined curricula. So um, when you came there, you had um, a uh, big book of um, different uh, seminars that you could do and which was for me like a um, like I could lose myself in this book and looking at all the interesting things that you could um, mm -hmm. uh, study there. So it was very little structured in the sense of um, uh, of what you see in BA programs or something like that and very much up to you to decide um, what you uh, wanted to go to. So somehow these different countries have their different educational cultures but um, I, the institutions where i ended up were similar in that regard that they had a very broad understanding of education and uh, of the liberty of to choose what you want that's very um, cool to study. yeah i mean not just your multicultural background but then also like 
I wouldn't say pros and cons of different places, but the, you know, the challenges and the, uh, the things that, that different countries kind of bring to the table. Um, so let's move on to your PhD thesis, uh, super interesting topic. Uh, and I guess, uh, timely <laughs> within the last 10 years, um, is quote, how to govern a new global risk, the construction of climate change as a public problem in Germany and France at the European and global level. So many layers, uh, it goes up in terms of, um, uh, I guess you could say knowledge production, but also governance structures, et cetera. So can you kind of walk us through your PhD thesis and then ha not just, I'm assuming you, you got there through looking through those big stacks of, of things and being interested, but then how did you uh, come up with the idea? And then what was uh, kind of your, the most, uh, the biggest thing you got out of the research and then, you know, how have you used it moving forward? Yeah. I mean, the, as you can see from the title, um, it's a PhD thesis that um, I wouldn't advise any of my students to do because it was way too broad. It was um, really covered way too much, um, uh, covered way too much, uh, full stop. Um, uh, but what I tried to do uh, in the thesis, uh, which ended up being something like 700 pages in French, so it was a complete madness. Um, wow. But it tried to look at um, different places. So to start in another way, um, it um, took something that is called the sociology of public problems. So as an mm -hmm. approach that mm -hmm. in, that permitted to integrate STS type of research and political science type of research, um, because it aims to look at the way that social problems or public problems are constructed in the public sphere. So mm -hmm. the point of departure is to say there is nothing obvious about the fact that climate change or um, uh, drinking driving or um, uh, marijuana consumption or whatever are public problems. They can become public problems. And if they become public problems, they do so through specific um, social processes of constructing the problem scientifically but also in the media and then through um, political institutions that will take up these problem, problems and develop um, political routines, instruments, etc. to treat them. And so looking at how, the way that such problems are constructed tells us something about, um, uh, about which actors push for um, specific types of defining the problem of specific times, then also a spe specific types also of um, resolving them or treating them um, and so it tells us something about wider society um, uh, and the political um, organization of our societies and so that makes it very fruitful for comparative um, mm -hmm. research and so I looked at the two contexts that I knew well Germany and France um, but then also because it occurred um, in the process of doing this research that of course the international arena so the global level is um, uh, has been very important for the construction of climate change but also has been an arena where a specific way of constructing the problem has been institutionalized and the other layer that was important to look at was the european layer so all of these have are, are linked um, between each other notably through expert committees that of course um, may meet at the, at the international level, but also um, uh, then uh, influence how the problem is treated at the national levels. Um, but they're also, they also have a dynamic of, of their own. So they're also separate uh, in some way. The way that climate change is constructed in the UN negotiations is to some degree different than uh, what you will find in Germany or in France. And so mm -hmm. looking at these different spaces um, separately but also in uh, relation to each other um, was a very fruitful way i think of um, uh, of trying to approach uh, this topic of what is climate change actually in different contexts how is it talked about how is it um, uh, treated in the media um, etc and how is it um, taken up uh, by the political system. And one uh, difference, for example, between uh, Germany and France that was very um, interesting was that um, the scientific community um, treating uh, the, the climatological community, if you want, and you can see this um, from uh, the recent um, Nobel Prize that has been awarded to uh, uh, 
to a German um, climate scientist co-awarded with uh, several others, but um, to, to uh, Hasselmann. Um, so the German um, scientific community was very um, well structured um, in the 80s uh, already, in the 80s, 90s, and um, had uh, a public, um, uh, was very present in the public sphere and in um, uh, expertise, in terms of expertise, in terms of reports, in terms of uh, media presence, etc., which helped uh, construct the problem or put the problem into the public sphere much earlier than it was in the case in France. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously also another type of um, uh, scientific community, which were political scientists, social scientists, um, developed a theory of um, what is called today ecological modernization. So a way to treat environmental problems or to interpret in environmental problems as problems of economic development, of industrial development, of industrial modernization. And so at the level of problem definition and at the problem at the level of solutions, um, there were specific scientific framings and um, scientific actors that proved to be very important in, uh, uh, in Germany and that were at least uh, in the 90s, uh, absent or not so present in uh, in France. And so that influenced the way um, that it was then taken up. So that's one of the things that I that I found in the thesis. Very interesting. Uh, and I, I've been working on a project um, uh, for the Fukushima Daiichi, like a nuclear power plant disaster. And then obviously that with, uh, you know, 10 or 11 years on now, um, you know, still we're feeling the reverberations in Germany and France with the nuclear kind of, discussion, if you will, for energy, because France has kind of mm -hmm. gone full bore in building new and nuclear mm -hmm. power plants and Germany has said no, no, no more. So obviously there's political kind of things. So maybe um, we can transition into you. We'll get to the you being the director and stuff in a second. But I guess t talk me through a little bit of your teaching or your teaching methods when you try mm -hmm. to, you know, talk to your students about, I mean, uh, how, how do you kind of explain to them like some of these concepts in the STS jargon of like reflexivity or socio-technical um, uh, or uh, 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 imaginaries and then also like um, current events? I mean, today, <laughs> today it seems like there's no shortage of current events uh, other than say climate change. So maybe talk a little bit about your teaching process and how you kind of bring some of those uh, STS terms into some sociology or how much STS kind of bleeds into your sociology classes? Um, depended on different um, institutions in which I, I, I did my teachings until now. Uh, so I did much um, explicitly STS teaching uh, while I was uh, in France um, during my PhD and after the PhD when I did my postdoctoral degrees. Um, I did less uh, explicit SDS um, courses now um, that I'm uh, in uh, in Hamburg here because um, I mean the curricula. It's also it depends on what um, uh, the um, institution demands, what types of um, courses uh, are, uh, are needed, etc. Um, but so I will talk briefly about the two experiences. So um, in in France. Um, I was one of the very interesting formats, I guess, or I think, um, that we organized together with colleagues was um, a course called um, Cartography of Controversies, where we looked at specific social technical controversies and tried to give um, the students, which were um, political science students um, in the one case and engineering students in the other case, um, uh, the tools to look at the co-production um, of uh, public problems between science and politics and the way that controversies um, over such public problems always involve at the same time or very often let's say involve at the same time disagreements about the scientific facts and disagreements um, of a more political nature um, and so that that was a very fruitful way of approaching things because um, very soon in the course we gave the students um, uh, the task to choose, um, to build teams and to choose a specific controversy. And then over the course of the semester, um, they could implement all the things that they learned in the course with regards to their, um, uh, uh, to their controversy. So that was one thing that I did uh, in Paris alongside also introductory courses to STS uh, and uh, things like that. Um, here in 
uh, in Hamburg. Um, I'm doing STS type of um, uh, teaching more in the context of um, environmental sociology or environmental politics. Um, but I think it is um, it is very fruitful actually to introduce that into these courses because environmental problems have um, that specificity. They're not the only ones, but they're, they are always very technical, very scientific um, at one point or another. So climate change, of course, involves very heavy modeling um, uh, of um, climate dynamics, but also uh, modeling of sort of economic dynamics when you try to um, resolve the problem. And so trying to understand how scientific framings then are introduced into the public realm and how um, you mentioned reflexivity, how we can then as social scientists be reflexive about um, these scientific framings and about perhaps also what they hide or what they don't, um, uh, what they make more difficult to, um, to see uh, with regards to a specific problem, uh, I think is very important when you teach um, uh, undergraduates. And um, the way that I do this is mostly to try to connect it to existing social science traditions in sociology or in um, political science. So I mentioned uh, just before the sociology of public problems, which is actually a tradition that has long existed parallel to STS and where you didn't have much um, connection but where the connections to me seem obvious because the sociology of public problems always looks at experts and expertise, statistics, et cetera, and their role in um, constructing public problems. And the same is uh, in sociology, of course, you have a whole um, range of constructivist um, uh, uh, studies of gender, of uh, environment, of um, uh, colonial or post-colonial or post-colonial studies, et cetera, which are actually very um, linked uh, to uh, STS type of research or which, which can be um, used to introduce STS type of thinking. So that has been more um, a question of linking STS to um, the curricula and to the, um, uh, to the traditions um, that uh, the students know or get to uh, get to know in their studies uh, and then also i mean um one of the things that i uh, did regularly in my courses is to try to introduce some type of group work on concrete um uh, problems because that's something that i learned with the cartography of controversies uh, classes that's usually the best way to to teach sts is to get into the complexity of an object because you can say many things about the theories of co-production or the theories of controversies or whatever, but uh, it normally it makes click uh, with the students when they see it in a concrete case. Yes, indeed. Uh, I would have to agree with you on that and some of the things that I've, I've had to go through even this year. Um, so moving on from your teaching, uh, you're now the director of uh, the Center for Sustainable Society research, um, quote, understanding institutions and processes of modern societies with respect to sustainability. So maybe talk us a little bit about how that kind of came to be, but then uh, segue into the working paper. And this is how I originally uh, found out about you. You did a long tweet thread that kind of summarized uh, uh, your working paper, uh, circles of global climate governance, power, performance, and consternation at the UN Climate Conference COP26 in Glasgow that just happened uh, at the beginning of this year. So, uh, you know, super interesting, and I'm sure we'll get more into the working paper. So maybe just start us off about how, you know, you became the director and what kind of you're trying to do and, and push the needle on and, and et cetera. Yeah, um, briefly on the, on the center. So um, the center actually um, is... Um, has been newly founded um, uh, a few years ago, um, but is in the continuity of an older center, which was a center for um, uh, for global governance. Um, uh, and so the refoundation of the center and the, um, uh, uh, it's shaping into this new um, form of the Center for Sustainable Society Research is part actually of a broader process in within the University of Hamburg, 
um, where um, questions of sustainability have become more and more important. And we have, um, uh, for example, the, an excellence cluster, um, climate, climatic change in society. There is a center of advanced studies, um, uh, futures of sustainability, etc. cetera. Uh, and so the center for, um, uh, um, for sustainable society research is more like an umbrella that tries to um, uh, stimulate and bring together um, research and researchers from different areas of the faculty um, which work on uh, issues of sustainability. And so um, it's really, uh, we have seed funding, we have um, um, uh, regular meeting on um, subjects, we have a working paper series, um, etc. Um, and try really to bring sus sustainability research within the faculty to to a new level if you want so that's that's the center um, and within this working paper series of the center we published um the uh, paper that you um, just mentioned on um uh, the glasgow uh, climate conference that um took place last year and uh, where we went with um or where i went with a, a larger team of uh, researchers from hamburg university um to study not only the negotiations, so that's um, perhaps the main starting point for this paper that um, we say or we find that uh, negotiations themselves are perhaps less and less um, important, or even if they stay important, but they're less and less central to what happens at these climate conferences because um, you have these climate conferences are um, now um, drawing worldwide media attention, but also uh, as new sets of actors, which are, for example, companies, city governments, um, uh, NGOs, think tanks, etc., social movements also, um, and which use um, this platform uh, of these conferences either to connect each other, to develop new initiatives, to um, contest dominant framings, etc. And so um, our idea, and that um, follows a tradition of, um, uh, of social science research that we did, um, I was part of a team um, that uh, um, did a similar kind of study already at COP21 in Paris in 2015. And so there is this tradition of what we call collaborative event ethnography. So going to big um, uh, international events and doing research in large teams on these events, because these events have something very specific to them, which is um, they are at the same time very large and very short, which makes it very difficult to um, uh, to apprehend them or to to try to examine what happens there as a, a researcher, because you don't have normally when you do um, ethnographic research, which is the method that we uh, used, you stay very a very long time in small and not so mobile communities. That's that was the traditional way of doing ethnography. And here you have quite the opposite. So it's it's very mobile. Um, a lot of things happen at the same time, uh, and you have only have this short amount of time. And so um, one way of treating this is to uh, develop common um, methods of studying um, what happens there. So it's common methods of observation and of sharing of data, and then following different types of actors through um, the the arenas of uh, the COP. And these are scientific actors, um, social science, uh, uh, civil society actors, um, politicians, negotiators, um, business actors, etc. So that was what we um, uh, what we did in Glasgow. And as the title suggests, one thing that we found was really that we could look at these conferences through different circles in which different practices, um, uh, which are structured by different practices. So the circle of the politics, the negotiations, then a second circle of um, uh, business actors and um, uh, non-state actors trying to find solutions to the climate crisis or um, advancing their preferred solutions to um, the climate crisis, their technologies, their um, proposals for finance, etc. And then a third circle, which is um, within and outside um, of the conference buildings and where civil society actors are engaged in more um, sometimes more confrontative, more um, contesting uh, activities um, and where they try to reframe 
or build um, alliances that go um, beyond uh, this whole um, uh, space of the COP. Yeah, and I, I really loved the uh, the three so social s spaces that you kind of distinguished. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned just a second ago, uh, like the spirit of New York, the spirit of Davos, the spirit of Porto Alegre, and mm -hmm. how that kind of like influences things, not just the negotiations, but then also like the perceptions. And I guess so I'll just kind of uh, summarize from your last tweet in the thread is, quote, global climate politics has entered a new and contradictory phase in which the need for deep transformation is seemingly accepted by all, while actual policies are clearly inefficient and consternation is growing both within and outside the UN process. So super interesting. Uh, I'll definitely provide a link uh, in the description. Um, so just as, you know, a last question, just as we're finishing up, uh, is, is there any other things that you wanted to say or discuss or maybe some interesting developments or future projects you're working on? I know, you know, we're super busy around, so maybe tease us in on a little things that are coming up or any last words kind of deal. Yeah, um, I, mean, I hope it's not my last words, but um, no. <laughs> in this conversation, <laughs> but touche, touche, Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, what's what's coming up now, or what we're doing already, yeah. but uh, hopefully in um, in a much um, perhaps larger um, context uh, soon, um, is to look at the social dynamics of or social or societal dynamics um, of. Um, decarbonization or mm. energy transition. So okay. um, one thing that we um, see in public debates about decarbonization, about um, low carbon development or whatever, is that um, you very often have um, experts that are coming from the economics, uh, from economic sciences or from engineering um, that dominate large um, parts of these debates because they are able to propose um, solutions, um, uh, models, uh, calculate trajectories, etc. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, propose um, policy relevant knowledge, if you want, um, uh, to these debates. But um, we think that um, one of the really important um, steps going forward in um, energy transitions is to understand to better understand the societal dynamics, the societal, um, what hinders um, uh, transitions, but also what can uh, enable them. Um, and so we look at different social processes which are um, 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 driving or inhibiting um, uh, energy transitions. And these are um, uh, things like social protests, um, social movements, etc. But also um, uh, in climate, uh, you have climate litigation networks. Um, that are very important consumption patterns. How do they change? Um, um, you know, all these, um, for example, local food um, uh, initiatives, um, the transition towns, uh, etc. How do these actually add up? How can we make sense of them? Um, what do local governments do? Um, scientists, scientific um, uh, knowledge, scientific frameworks, etc. So trying to broaden the perspective on energy transitions beyond technologies and markets mm -hmm. and more to really um, society and society societal dynamics. Um, and of course, this involves um, it's a very broad um, agenda of research um, um, and which is connected to several ongoing um, uh, research agendas in transition studies, um, most notably, but also in other fields. But I think which um, is still underrepresented both yeah. in academic research and in public debate. And so that's one of the, I think, um, more interesting uh, things that I'm hopefully going to do uh, more in the future. Sounds great. Well, uh, that, I mean, very looking forward to some of the more, uh, you know, research on decarbonization, et cetera, social dynamics. Sounds super interesting. Um, well, I mean, that about wraps it up. It's been, you know, 35 minutes. I think we did well with our time. Mm -hmm. uh, we got in a lot. Um, so just wanted to say, you know, thanks for coming on STS Shorts, Stefan, and really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a great discussion.